when I saw the kids and the people praising God, I can see the presence of the Lord coming in the midst of the place. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to introduce our speaker for this morning. He has a word for us on today. And I want you to pray for the man of God. Hallelujah. I want you to pray that God used him like never before. He blessed my soul in Orlando, Florida this past year. In 25 minutes, he broke the fallow ground and the people of God were praising like they have lost their mind. But I want you to sit attentively and I want you to sit patiently waiting for God to move. And we want to introduce to you in the presence of Pastor John Betts, the pastor of the Greater Refuge Church of Christ in Plainfield, New Jersey. Let's give God praise for him this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Isn't the Lord wonderful? He is altogether lovely and worthy of all of the praise, all of the glory, all of the honor that we can give unto him. No wonder the psalmist said, oh, magnify. Mm, you know, when you magnify something, it doesn't change what it is. It just appears greater. So magnify the Lord with me rather than talking about the hurts and the pains, the disappointments. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to talk about how good he is, how great he is, what he's brought me through. And so when the world sees and hears your testimony, he is magnified. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt. You know, people were losing their minds last week because of an event that took place in Las Vegas. Paid all kind of money just to see someone perform at halftime going by the title of Usher. And they just lording that name and celebrating that name and lifting that name. Ah, uh, but if we could exalt one name, if we could lift one name, yeah, that name should be Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name Jesus soothes my doubts, calms all of my fears. We are so grateful to the Lord for this opportunity to fellowship with you this morning refuge apostolic it's been a while amen with the pandemic and so many other changes it's been a while and we are so grateful to be here and we say thank you to sister geraldine livingston for reaching out and extending this invitation we thank you so much for thinking enough of us to invite us into your worship amen we do honor the spirit of christ as head in our life to the pastor here, our big brother and friend, Bishop Vaughn McCray. Praise the Lord, the angel of the house. Praise the Lord. We honor Lady McCray. Praise the Lord. And, and I will say that I, my father in the gospel, Bishop Michael Greer, and I had three brothers who I always look up to and respect. Two of them the Lord has called home, Elder Alfred Qualls, Elder Jules Jenkins, and Bishop Vaughn McCray. Those are my three big brothers. And so, amen, I am honored to be here today in support of my big brother, Bishop Vaughn McCray. We honor, amen, our good friend, Elder Johnson. Praise the Lord. So good to see you. Looking good. Praise the Lord. Elder Golden, good to see you. It's been a while. Praise the Lord. God bless you too. Amen. Elder McCray, praise the Lord. Seems like we've been together all weekend. <laughs> praise the Lord. God bless you to all of the wives. Amen. To the church mothers, the missionaries, to all of the deacons, and to our wife, Sister Loria Betts. Praise the Lord. I didn't know if she'd be able to keep up with me this weekend. 
because of the pre the Northeast Congress rally. Uh, we were on the go all day Friday, all day Saturday, and here we are now. I didn't know if she'd keep up, but she was with me step for step. Praise the Lord for her. And for our, one of our grandsons, the Lord has blessed us with nine grandchildren, and one of our grandsons is here, Jaden. Praise the Lord for him. And he hung with us all weekend, too. He went to both nights of the Congress rally, and I thought he'd sleep this morning, but he's here with us again. Praise the Lord. He say he wants to be a preacher one day, so y'all pray for him. He knows not what he asks for. <laughs> Pray for him, amen. I thank God, amen, for my wife. Uh, the Lord has blessed us uh, this November. If the Lord spare life, we'll see 48 years together. Praise the Lord. We, we dated for six years. Back then, they called it courting. That's how old it was. We courted for six years. And I say that to any young people that may be listening, you can date and be holy. You can. You can. So we courted for six years, and this November we'll be married for 42 years. And so that's why I say 48. The Lord has been just that good. Young people, anybody that's not willing to put God first, then you need to keep moving. Because when it comes to relationships, when it comes to marriage, it won't always be peaches and cream. There's going to be times when you don't even want to see the other party. But if they love God more than they love you, no matter how tough things may get between you, there's going to be a reconciliation because God is about reconciliation. Find somebody that loves the Lord more than they love you, and you'll be all right. God bless you. Let us go to the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel. And I'm going to read three different passages of scripture from Ezekiel. First one will be Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Then we will go to chapter 3, verse 4 and verse 5. And then our final scripture will come from Ezekiel chapter 37. And verse 3. All right. So those three passages of Scripture, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 4 and verse 5, and Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. All right. Beginning at Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the captives, as I was among the captives, by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 4 and verse 5. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. And in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, 
O Lord God, thou knowest. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Wonderful Savior, Counselor, and Mighty God. We humble now in thy presence. We acknowledge your divine authority. We step down, O oh God, asking if you will step up and feed us fresh manna from on high as only you can. And for this, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In your wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. From these particular verses from the prophet Ezekiel, I'd like to share with you an encouraging thought this morning, specifically designed and intended for the angel of this house, Bishop Vaughn McRae, but also each and every one of you that want to tap in to what the Lord is saying as well. The thought is you were made for this. You were made for this. In the scripture text, we read of the prophet Ezekiel, now in captivity in Babylon, by the river of Kiba. Here the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, affirming the reason Judah is here is because of judgment that I used Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians to execute. Why did Judah sustain, suffer this judgment? Cause of apostasy. When you turn your back on the Lord, you cannot expect anything good to come your way. For as good as the Lord has been to you, how can you turn away? Israel did this. Judah did this. Many question and say, how can the Lord allow the Assyrians to overtake Israel, the northern kingdom? How can he allow the Babylonians to overtake Judah, the southern kingdom? Well, they had long left him. And I want you to know that when it comes to life, my worst day as a child of God, I'd be compared to my best day as a sinner. There's nothing like having Christ in your life. And for all the good that the Lord had done for Israel, for all the good that he had done for Judah, they left him. They turned their backs on him and went after other gods and began to worship them. And so not only did they turn to other gods, but their worship to the one true God began to diminish. And I submit to you today that there is nothing new under the sun. There are those who are afraid of COVID. They're afraid that it is something we've never seen before and we don't know what to do with it. But I submit to you, the word of God has told us there is nothing new under the sun. It may have had a different name, but it's been here before. Praise the Lord. And because of fear, some have diminished their worship. Some have diminished their sacrifice to the Lord. But I say to you today, this is where I stand. COVID is not greater than my God. Thank you, Jesus. I will respect it. Yes, yes, I will take safety precautions. 
cautioned. But beyond that, I will trust my God. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of our God. For they are brought down and falling, but we are risen and we stand upright. Save, Lord. Hey, glory, let the king hear us when we call. I can't allow what's going on in this world. I can't allow COVID to diminish my sacrifice and my worship unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. They not only diminish their sacrifice, but they diminish the frequency of their sacrifice. You have folk today that love the Lord when he first brought them out of darkness. And we're willing to give him anything. I'll give you my whole paycheck, Lord. I, I'll give you my whole week. I'll make it to the house of God. But now, 30, 40 years later, Lord, take what I give you. They diminished in their sacrifice. They diminished in their frequency. And when they left him, praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel, Chapter 9 and verse 3, and the glory of the God of Israel was gone. You leave him, don't expect him just to hang around. Praise the Lord. Because when you leave him, there's somebody else that wants him. Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 18 says, then the glory of the Lord departed. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live another minute in this world without the glory of God in my life. I don't know how you feel about it, but I know when he wakes me up in the morning and I have my prayer time with him, my devotion time, there's nothing like his presence. I don't wait till I get to the sanctuary to feel him. No, sir, hallelujah. But when I wake up in the morning, I want to reach out to him. I want to have that kind of relationship where it's not long distance when I call. I want it to be local. I want to know as soon as I pick up the phone, he's going to say, yes, I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. I never want to hear that the glory of the Lord has departed. And then in Ezekiel chapter 33 through verse 48, the Lord used Ezekiel to declare to Judah, that while they were in captivity in Babylon, that there would be a restoration. I want to say to anyone who has left the Lord, as long as there is life, there is hope. You can come home again. And never mind how people look at you. Never mind how people talk about you. You've got one soul and don't let pride cause it to be lost. If you know life was better with Christ, then come on home. The Lord says to Ezekiel, let them know that even though they're experiencing my judgment, there will be a time of restoration. Then in chapter 36 and verse 24, it says to Ezekiel, I want you to speak of the regathering of Judah. Yes, Lord. One thing I love about the Lord, he can punish, but after the punishment, he can embrace because it is for our good. And in chapter 36, verse 25, he says that there's going to be a regeneration of the Jewish heart. I'm not just going to bring you back physically. Do you not know there are some that are physically in the house of God, but spiritually they are so far away. They come, they wear their uniform on any given Sunday. They will give their tithes they will give their offering but in their hearts they are so far from the lord living off of yesterday's anointing when the spirit moves they will wave their hands off of yesterday's anointing but the lord said i'm not just going to bring you back as a body but i'm going to regenerate your heart that's why david in his confession said renew a right spirit within me oh thank you jesus why 
why would I want to fool around and be lost going through the church? I don't want to be lost after 40, 50 years of coming to the house of God. David said, renew a right spirit within me. I need to be right with the Lord. I don't want to be a title and no spirit. Ah, glory. There are people who think that the preachers are preaching on the congregation when they talk about sin and walking unrightly. But I want you to know it's not just for the congregation. The Lord is speaking to the preachers as well that we too have got to mind our step. We've got to be careful how we walk. And so now I know as we are celebrating, amen, the angel of this house, Bishop McCray, some may wonder, well, what does this have to do with a pastoral appreciation celebration? Well, let me take you back to chapter one, verse one, the first verse that we read today from Ezekiel. And there is a significant number mentioned in Ezekiel chapter one and verse one. And that is Ezekiel said in the 30th year, in the 30th year, when the Lord entered covenant relationship with Israel at Mount Sinai, in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, the Lord said this, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. The Lord had plans for Israel and it included someone serving as priests. And when the Lord established the priesthood, he told Moses that the priests are to come from the tribe of Levi, the sons of Aaron. Not only must the priest be a Levite and from the family of Aaron, also they must only be males. And they were to be a minimum age of 30 years old when they began their service. You will find this recorded in Numbers chapter 4 and verse 3 where you read from 30 years old and upward even until 50 years old all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation the lord established an age range now now if you read the scriptures and take time with it you'll find that david altered that in his day and took it down to 25 but i don't believe david was being contrary to the will of God. When the Lord spoke 30 to 50, he was giving 30 so that it's a sign or a stage of maturity. You see, when you're going to leave God's people he needs someone that's mature you can't have someone lead that when you stare at them hard they break down and and fall apart you, you can't have someone lead that when people turn their back on you you give up that's not how god works when he sends you he's already prepared you my god hallelujah he doesn't send us unprepared so he was working within the spirit. The, the Bible tells us that the letter killeth. Sometimes we hold so strict to the letter till we miss the intent. David didn't miss the intent and that's why he was able to adjust to 25. And then there are those who want to, amen, put the priest out to pasture once he reached 50 because numbers 4 and 3 says 50. But the Lord didn't say his time was over at 50. He just said let him not serve he could assist this is because at that time he may not have been physically strong enough to deal with the sacrifices the animal sacrifices that were brought and so he could assist the younger priest and again it is the spirit of what the Lord is saying but look at that number 30 oh my God in the 30th year Ezekiel writes 
in chapter 1 verse 1 amen Ezekiel it is believed amen when he went into the Babylonian captivity was somewhere about uh, 35 years old. Praise the Lord. And so he says in the 30th year, this should have been his time uh, to serve in the temple what he has been prepared for I, I wonder is there anyone in the house who's ever had the experience where you have been prepared for something and when it comes your time everything is changed and all that you have prepared for is no longer available can you imagine being a teenager 16 and preparing to drive you're looking to obtain your license to drive and after you've done all of the written tests and after you've done the test amen the physical test of driving and parallel parking and k-turn and everything else you go home and think i'm gonna get my license and you get a, an email that says as of today we have changed the number from 16 to 26 you've got to wait 10 more years can you imagine how disappointing and deflating that would be well look at the prophet Ezekiel he's been prepared from his youth to be a priest in the temple but now the Babylonians have come and remove them from the land and Ezekiel cannot enter the temple he must sit by the river Kiba and while sitting by the river Kiba the Lord talks to him and says listen here I know you may have been thinking that you were going to serve in the temple but I, I've got a different ministry for you I've got a different calling on your life and so what I want you to do is to speak to my people how many of us and I know amen the pastors of this day and time can identify with this we waited our turn we serve the Lord. We were faithful. We're building ministries. We're building in the lives of God's people. And here comes this thing called COVID. And we're being told no more than 10 can gather at a time. How many pastors looked at this and said, my God, how are we going to go forward? And had to hurry up and make some adjustments and some changes to be able to minister and to care for the flock oh yes lord it caused us to consider who we are and who our god is we couldn't just do it the way our fathers in the gospel did it we couldn't just line up and say i'll do what they did we've had to make some changes how many pastors have been struggling with the finance hey glory before covid they were paying the bills COVID came along and some folks said if I'm not in the building I'm not giving and you've got pastors trying to make a dollar at a 15 cent trying to keep the church moving trying to keep the saints going but I know this if God be for you he is more Oh, yes, she is. Then the whole world against you. Ministries through teleconference, ministry through Zoom and etc. Parking lot services, drive through communion. We did all that we could. And then as it subsided and we came back into the sanctuaries, how many saints have still stayed away and the pastors amen are reaching out and pouring out and giving and yes it is a different season yes it is a different time but the Lord said to Ezekiel 
preach to my people. Tell them what thus saith the Lord. Well, Lord, I know that I've been conditioned to go to you because if you understand the roles of the priest and the prophet, the priest would go to God for the people and the prophet would go to the people for God. So now Ezekiel's role has changed 160. He has now gone from going to God for the people to God sending him to the people for him. He said, no, you don't need to come and try to make a sacrifice unto me here in Babylon, but go and tell my people, not in a strange language, not in a foreign tongue, but tell my people what thus saith the Lord if you're going to be the prophet of God you've got to say what the Lord tell you to say and it's not always what people want to hear I know in this day and time you've got mega churches with mega preachers who are preaching health and wealth who are preaching how to start your own business who are preaching self wealth but the Lord said preach my word give them the gospel and what is the gospel it is the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ if I never tell you how to become a millionaire I must tell you that you must repent of your sins be baptized in his name for the remission of your sin and receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and when the Holy Ghost comes it will or he will speak with all the tongues my Lord has the spirit of God give the utterance I'd rather preach that than to tell you how to be a millionaire what sense does it make to be a millionaire and lift up your eyes in hell I got the best thing and that is Christ on the inside no wonder the songwriter said oh what a change What a change, what a change, what a change in my life. All right, I got to bring this to a close. And so I know that it's not easy right now. But please remember this, that the Lord has made you for this. In Ezekiel chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. The Lord doesn't want any weak men. He said, stand on thy feet. And what do I mean by weak men? I'm not talking about the physical stature but the spiritual stature when you have to declare what is right when you have to declare what is wrong and when you get up to give the word and people say I don't want to hear him he preached too much about sin oh Lord because today preachers are pacifying they won't touch sin you can be living in adultery and they'll never touch on it I don't want to lose their tithes I don't want to lose their offering but if they walk out because you preach the gospel then let them walk out you can't let anybody hold you hostage when it comes to the truth that's why the Lord said to Ezekiel stand upon thy feet be the man that I call you to be have some backbone to you if they leave you let it be so but you preach the word that I have given unto you you and so amen verse 2 that's what he said to him and the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me up upon a rock when the Lord has called you and prepared you to minister he gives you the strength to stand ah, if I've got to stand alone then I'm not alone because I know the Lord is with me and as long as the Lord is with me it's alright 
If I've got to walk in the house of God and get on my knees by myself, that's all right. As long as the Lord is with me and I am in him and he is in me. And so the Lord said, I've equipped you. Yeah. And Pastor McCray, because you are my big brother and I've seen some of your ministry and I've experienced some of your lifetime, I know for a fact there were days and times where Pastor McCray moved his physical residence to support the ministry made sacrifices that some other ministers would not have made not only did he move himself but he moved his family for the sake of the ministry when his pastor bishop michael gray sent him down to camden he didn't turn around and say well i want to stay at refuge but went down to camden and when he didn't have the support of the multitude he worked and labored and I'm not talking about just in a spiritual sense but in a physical sense renovating, upgrading, building the house of God and then laboring with the saints of God laboring to help souls come into the kingdom and I know he shared with me one night it looked like the whole city was on fire and yet he worshipped the Lord, yet he praised God. Don't you know all of that was not for naught? The Lord was bringing him to this point. The Lord was bringing him to this place. You, you were made for this. He doesn't just give for the sake of giving. When the Lord instills in you, it's for a reason. It's for a purpose. You might might not see it now, but hang in there, way on the low. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory, just wait on the Lord. Yeah, I thought that the ministry would be bringing dead things to God, which was the priestly role, the dead sacrifices. I thought my ministry would be bringing the dead things to God. But he said, no, I have prepared you to bring life to me. Yeah, I I want you to go from the dead things uh, to life. What do you mean by life? Well, the prophet doesn't bring dead things to God like the priest. The prophet brings life to God. How? How can I, Lord, as your servant, bring life to you? That's the closing chapter in verse. Chapter 37 in verse 3. Son of man, can these bones live? Oh, my God. Oh Lord, thou knowest Ezekiel was a wise prophet. He didn't just come out and say, I know they can. He didn't just come out and say, you can do it. But he said, Lord, your pay grade is above mine. Your knowledge and wisdom is above mine. I don't know if they can live. But Lord, you know. What did the Lord tell them? Preach to them. Give them the word. Yeah. How many of us during the pandemic were preaching in empty sanctuaries, looking into the lens of a camera and trying to get the word out in the sanctuary by yourself? How many sat in their living room and preached the word from their couch? The Lord said, preach the word. I want you to give these bones give them the word what do they need they need the word if I'm going to survive if I'm going to live I need the word Mm. Oh, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And 
I know that this was a vision, but in the vision, the Lord was sending a message. And that message was that I know there's death here now, but where there is death, life is coming. And so I encourage you today, don't let the enemy fool you. Some folk were in church on last year's anointing. And when COVID came and the doors closed, they left all together. You might look around and say, where's Sister Jane? Where's Brother Bob? But after you look for Jane and Bob, then look up. We'll lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help oh, my help cometh from the Lord if Bob and Jane want to lose out I can't make them stay but I came over here Oh Lord, I came over here to stay. I made a vow to the Lord. I promised him that I, I'm going to serve him until I die. And I can't let COVID, I can't let membership, I can't let people that dislike me stop me on my journey. Can these? Yeah, glory. Can these bones live? Ezekiel started preaching. And when he started preaching, he heard a noise. <laughs> oh, glory. Ah, yes, sir. He heard a noise. Now, if you want to speculate what that noise was, you go ahead. Because some people think he heard the bones rattling as they were coming back together. Other folks think that he heard the spirit of the Lord descending to bring the bones back together. But I submit to you, whatever you believe that sound was, that I've been in the Lord's house long enough that I've heard a sound that's like no other sound. Hmm. And the sound I'm talking about is not clapping of hands. It is not patting of feet. It is not even speaking in other tongues or unknown tongues. The sound I've heard that's like no other sound is when the spirit of the Lord is in the midst of his people. And people begin to praise him, not because the praise leader had worked on you and said, come on. You, you, you know, some praise leaders, they got to work you into a frenzy just to get you to praise. But the sound I'm talking about, it doesn't come from a praise leader. The sound I'm talking about is when you walked in that Sunday and you said, I've been through so much this week. I just want to get through this service. But somewhere in the midst of the worship, there is a sound that enters the building and before you know it over here somebody's rejoicing over here somebody's praising him and there is a sound that when you shut down all the music you can still hear it it's the presence of the Lord in the midst of his people and so as I get ready to take my seat these jaw bones didn't have a choice because when the spirit of the Lord descends you can't help that's why Jeremiah said it is like fire shut up in in my bones Anybody got Holy Ghost fire today? Anybody feel like you've been redeemed today? I'm going to ask you for one moment if you would just start to release our love. And I said release because I don't want to tell you what to say. But if you could just for a moment release, I believe if we just release for a moment that the Lord will allow that sound in this house right now anybody that just wants to release you want to cut loose and let 
out of you what belongs to the law anybody that just want to cut loose right now look at what you've been through look at how hard it's been look at how the enemy has tried to destroy you but you're here today the songwriter said somehow somehow I've got to make this journey somehow somehow you were made for this you were made to endure what's happening right now the Lord equipped you for what's happening right now those of you that are having financial challenges right now the Lord equipped you for that Hallelujah! don't just go run into the bank can't meet my bills let me go get a loan that's just putting you in deeper debt they that wait upon the Lord when, I, when Lori and I first got married it was financially tough showed my father my paycheck and my father said I make more in unemployment than you do going to work every day we were struggling we were down to minimum, refrigerator empty. It was a Sunday afternoon, and a sister knocked on our front door with a bag of grocery. Here, you were made for this. Don't let the enemy tell you you can't handle this. Doctor has said, we don't like what we see. You up all night. You can stay up all night if you want, but it's not going to change it. Faith in God. You are the Jehovah Rapha. Lord, if it's your will that this brings me home, amen, I want to make sure I'm ready. But if it's not your will, then all you're doing is changing my testimony. So go on and lay your head on that pillow and get you some sleep because he is in control. And when you recognize that you were made for this, you don't let this world shake you. I got to let it go. People all shook up that maybe a president we don't like in the past may get back in again. People all shook up. If he get back in again, you know what's going to happen to this country? You know what's going to happen to us? You all shook up about it. Ah, you were made for this. They could put anybody they want in office. You were made for this. They could change whatever laws they want to change. You were made for this. Don't you lose your sleep over who might be president. Because every president has a king. And he is called the great I am. And he won't put no more on you. Than you can bear. Would you stand to your feet for a moment those of you that can oh glory hallelujah if we can just take a moment and just think about how good God has been to us mm. just think about how good God's been to you I'm convinced some of us were not supposed to be here today we should have been gone years ago but look at God look at God Hallelujah. The enemy told me when I was going for my surgery, he said, say goodbye to your family because you're not coming out from under the anesthesia. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That was over 30 years ago. I'm here to tell you today. Hallelujah. Think on what the Lord has done for you. Look at how good he's been to you. Look at what he's brought you through. And after you think on it, let's just open up a praise in this house.